you know, uh, we use space technology every single day. We use space technology when we talk to our families, to watch videos on YouTube, and even to get money in the bank machines. And the same goes uh, for things that we don't really understand, but we also appreciate. And I can tell you that applies to government as well. We keep track of health of our forests, and if one of them lights up on fire, it helps us with our response. And after disasters like that, it also helps with the search and rescue. So space has such a profound impact on our public safety and well-being as well. So who here has heard of the canned arm? Put up your hand if you heard of the canned arm. I can't see too well. Okay, now it's got a lot of hands up. That's amazing. It's a robotics arm that operates in space. Canadians built it. And that's the best arm that's ever been built. Well, when doctors operate on people's brains, they have the super, they have to be super precise with everything they touch. So they use robotic arms, similar to the Canada arm, and copy that technology to make sure that they are precise and safe to avoid brain damage for the patient. It's incredible how close life on Earth and space can be. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're here for a very exciting announcement. But it took a lot of ambition for Canada to become the experts in robotics and space. So even though Canada has a great reputation in the space industry, we're not stopping here. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to launch Canada's new space strategy today. Last week, Prime Minister Trudeau and I were at the Canadian Space Agency with almost all of our current Hired astronauts. It's actually pretty darn cool. We announced the central piece of our space strategy that Canada is going to the moon. And, and we'll be building Canada 3 with a lunar gateway. And what's that? The lunar gateway will be the first space station that will orbit around the moon. And does anyone here know what orbit means? That's right, it's when an object turns around a planet or a star in space because it's attracted by its gravity, like the moon turns around the Earth. And we're going to be sending Canadian astronauts to the station, and they're going to be living around the moon for a while and doing experiments on science and health. And all these experiments will teach us lessons that we can apply right here on Earth. So, now why am I talking about Canada's space strategy with you today? Well, first of all, it's pretty darn cool, and I must confess, I've got the best job on Earth. <laughs> but more importantly, maybe one of you will be able to build that next robot that will be used on Mars. For every space science mission that we do, there's a team of people, doctors, engineers, nutritionists, scientists, entrepreneurs, writers, and program specialists. So no matter what you're good at, because I know all of you are good at something, actually quite a few things, there's a role for you if you're passionate about space. And because space is a growing sector, there is really a future for people in terms of the job opportunities. So when you grow up, there'll be a lot of opportunities in the space sector. Working in the space sector means making discoveries no one has made yet, and that's the exciting part. Building robots that don't even exist today, looking at planets and stars and galaxies that are light years away. But to be ready for these exciting jobs, you need to stay in school and keep up with good grades, and also be very curious. And finally, we're going to need some Canadians to go to the moon. That's the cool part of this. And we decided that we have some incredible astronauts, but we've got to start a program to nurture and develop that future talent. So we're starting the Junior Astronaut Campaign. And with this campaign, you're going to be able to learn more about all that's, in, all that's involved in traveling to space. There will be online activities and games so you can learn more about space exploration. And next year, in the fall, if you win, an astronaut will visit your school in your community. 
Or one of you could even win a spot on the Canadian Space Agency Space Camp to train with real astronauts as well. So there you have it, a quick overview of our space strategy. Our commitment to the Lunar Gateway is the cornerstone, cornerstone of our space strategy. This is something that we unveiled just a few days ago, which will leverage Canada's strengths in robotics and artificial intelligence while advancing science and innovation in exciting areas to make sure that we lead in technology development. And I encourage you to review the entire strategy online. And you'll see that our strategy will position Canada's space industry to take full advantage of the growing global space economy, including our small and medium-sized businesses as well, by investing $150 million over five years to help demonstrate, to make sure that they're in a position to develop space technologies, grow and create good quality middle-class jobs. This strategy also places priority on harnessing space science and technology to solve important challenges on Earth, including investing in satellite communication technologies for broadband and internet connectivity, which is so critical to so many communities, particularly our remote and rural communities. Exploring how the delivery of healthcare services in isolated communities can be improved through lessons learned in space. Funding the development and demonstration of lunar science and technologies in fields like artificial intelligence robotics and health, and using the data, and this is so exciting as well, using the data collected from Canada's space-based assets to grow businesses and conduct cutting-edge science, including about the impact of climate change on the Earth's atmosphere. So you can see the impact the strategy is going to have well beyond the Lunar Gateway as well. The bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're taking the necessary steps for Canada to be a successful successful space-faring nation and to build on our 60 years of expertise. And I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed to the development of this strategy, including members of industry and academia that are here today as well. Like I said, this was an incredible effort by so many people who were so passionate about space and stepped up in a big way and worked together to deliver this strategy. And I look forward to working with you as we cement Canada's leadership in the international space sector. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a big day for Canada here on Earth and beyond. And as the current Governor General says, the sky is not the limit. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good afternoon, folks. Um, I, want to, I want to give you a little bit of perspective from where I stand on what, what you just heard and why it matters to you. And what, what we're talking about, you're often going to hear your mentors, your teachers, family telling you to set goals in your life, to find your passion, to if, if STEM is that's something that interests you, I suspect since you're all here today, you have a bit of curiosity inside you. If that's you, follow that path, follow that passion. And what we promise
promise you is that when you get to the end of that line, there'll be a job here in Canada for you. And not just any job, but a job that you love. Like the minister said, he loves his job. I love my job. We want you to love your job. And we want your job to bring value to society. And that is what informs our space program, our space strategy today, is all about leveraging the inspiration of space to bring people together to tackle big challenges and bring solutions back to our planet, to help us all live higher quality lives together and make sure everyone has a fair shake at life. And I'm joined on stage by some people who are doing and have done just that and are making already and have for many years in some cases significant contributions to our society. And they're kind of behind the scenes sometimes. You don't realize these things are going on, but these are some great examples. So we're gonna play a little game and I'm gonna get you to help me out. I'm gonna introduce these three people and they're gonna, they're gonna I'll ask them a question and hopefully that question will give you some insight into what, you, what they do, but I'll give you a hint. They do three different jobs. They're working in three different fields. So one is working in medical, one is an engineer, and one is a scientist. Okay, so let me start here. So I'm gonna start with Nicole Buckley. I won't tell you what she does, but I just wanna <laughs> ask Nicole, what is a quality that you think is extremely important with, with related to your work? I think the most important quality is to be curious, very curious. And the second quality is to be tenacious. Tenacious means that when your parents tell you to stop asking so many questions, <laughs> you keep asking the questions anyway. And, and what's really neat is that when you go into space, you can ask questions you can't ask on Earth. There's no gravity, those clouds don't get in the way, we can see further, and we can ask great questions, and we can work with others to ask, get our questions all put together and ask even better ones. So I don't know if you can guess who I am, except I'm the one with lots of experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Okay, next, and at the end, you're gonna guess what the jobs are that they do. So make sure you're paying attention to the, to the answers here. All right, our next is uh, Nick Yi. And Nick, I wanted to ask you, what um, aspect of space, what cool aspect of space is important from your, your perspective? Yeah, so space is a very exciting place. A lot of people wanna go out there and explore. One thing I was concerned about is making sure that they can come back and go out again and keep exploring, staying healthy, keeping their bones, their eyesight intact. Thankfully, we have a lot of bright people, medical doctors, engineers, and scientists, being out there bringing new technology to monitor their health, and hopefully one day bring it back to Earth and help people in the hospital and people at home to stay healthy. All right, thank you, Nick. All right, next is uh, Cassie McLeod. And Cassie, I'm wondering what cool space project you have or would like to work on. Well, ever since I was a little kid, I was always super passionate about space and space exploration. So that kind of led me to end up with the AlbertaSat team. And the AlbertaSat team works on cube satellites, which are really small satellites. Um, so to answer your question, I would love to get involved with um, a bigger project. So something like the RadarSat constellation, which is three satellites that orbit the Earth and um, work on Earth observation. Uh, I think a project like that would be really cool. And do you feel like you live in a country where you might be able to do that in the future now? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so remember, it's scientist, engineer, and medicine. Those are your three fields, so over to the minister here. So I got the tough part of this job, right? So I'm going to ask for some help and get some feedback from the audience. So we're gonna, I'm gonna identify each individual, and you gotta guess through your applause, what particular field of interest are they interested in, as, as Jeremy mentioned. Are they scientists, are they engineer, or medical? So we'll start off with Casey first. So if you think she's a scientist, applaud really loud. Uh, if you think Nick is a scientist, applaud really loud. loud. <laughs> and if you think Nicole is a scientist, please applaud. <laughs> so I think there's overwhelming consensus. I just want to let you know you're right. <laughs> scientists. Now we narrow down to our two final contestants. So do you think Casey now is either an 
engineer or someone in the medical profession. So applaud really loud if you think she's an engineer. <laughs> and just for his personality purposes, if you think Nick's an engineer. <laughs> so again, you guys are incredible. You're right. He is an engineer. And so what do you think this young fella does? Got you got it. That's right. So amazing. Thank you very much for your participation. As you can see, as Jeremy mentioned, being an astronaut is a dream that you know, he had. He was very fortunate to fulfill. So many people are inspired to become astronauts, but there's so many people behind the scenes that support astronauts. Thousands and thousands of people in different professions that have an impact. I'm very fortunate that I'm in politics, that I get to develop and deploy policy. And today we talk about space strategy and space policy. But you have engineers, doctors, people in the medical profession, and scientists that support Jeremy on, on, his, on his missions going forward. And that's what space is about. It's so exciting, it's so broad, and there's limitless possibilities. Over here. Yeah, I'm just curious. So in the audience here, are there any among you that would be willing or would be excited about going to space someday? Just raise your hands. See if we got some future astronauts. Oh, yeah, I see. All right, so just on that topic, space is changing right now. Things, we now live in a world where rockets blast off and turn around and come back after their mission land, get refueled, and fly again. It's making the cost of getting to space cheaper. It's reducing it. And that means we're going to be doing lots more space in the future. So we're going to be sending a lot more Canadians to space in your lifetime. So that's very exciting for you. What about the rest of you? Are any of you like to join our space team in general? People who think space is a worthy pursuit, maybe you'd like to be a scientist, an engineer, or work in the medical field, looking to bring answers back to our planets. Yes, I see more hands. Anyone over here? Yep, see some more hands there. And that's great, and that is what matters about today. We've decided that we can look into the future. We realize, we're 100, say with 100% confidence, that we are going to use space more and more and more to deliver the services that you and I use every day on the planet but also to learn, to solve problems and bring them back. And we need you, we absolutely need you as part of that team. For me, I can't wait to go to space, but while I'm training, and I haven't flown in space yet, but while I'm training and getting ready to go, I'm part of this incredible team. Just one person on this enormous team of people who makes space possible. And in this strategy, all I see is opportunity. We didn't give you the answers today. What we said was, in Canada, we're going to be part of pushing things, pushing the boundaries. We're gonna, we just challenged you. Our leadership has just challenged you to go out and leverage space for the benefit of all Canadians. And like the minister said, he, I wanted to highlight, it affect, it affect our space, even in a job like his, a job of leadership, his job is leadership. He's recognized, and the government has recognized that we need that direction to send us forward. There's another job in here, and that's the other side of the government, uh, Savannah Laporte, the president of the Canadian Space Agency, is sitting right here. He leads our team, our space team, which helped get us here today. I hope you understand that this is super, super exciting because of the opportunity we now have before us. And uh, on behalf of the president and other Canadians, we are not going to let our leadership down. We're going to seize this opportunity, right, folks? I was talking to you about this earlier. We're going to seize this opportunity that we have. To do it in Canadian style, we're going to pursue excellence and we're going to bring a lot of benefit back to Canadians. So, great day. Thank you, Minister. And if I may, very quickly, because I think it's so important, and I want to underscore this, and I said this in my remarks as well. It was a team effort to put this space strategy forward. Significant investment since we formed government $2.6 billion. But none of this would have been possible without. Jeremy, this young fellow is so passionate, his advocacy, he was in Ottawa, he was meeting with policy leaders, politicians, from all political stripes, meeting with civil servants, making the case for space in such a compelling way. Can we get a round of applause for Jeremy?
Now is your chance. Now it's a little dark, but you probably bring up the house lights a little bit. What do you think of the stuff on the dome? Doesn't the ISS look amazing? Yeah, I think it had Jupiter just a moment ago floating over our heads, which is a good way to go. Did you guys see the Canada Arm up there? We were talking about it. The minister was talking on the street. You see it? Isn't that awesome? Okay, do we have a question in the audience for Jeremy or for Mr. Baines? We have a hand up right here. Yeah, lots of hands up, so let's get some microphones going. Someday, I can't wait 
to float to the cupola and see one time around the planet like that. I think it would be incredible. Sam, where are you? Oh, there we go. Question back here. I have a question. Um, how did you win the challenge? So the way the challenge works is there's three components of the junior astronaut program. One is there's a questionnaire that you have to fill out. Then, then you have to submit a video. Um, and so that's very important. And then you need a reference letter as well. So there's different components to it. It's a rigorous process. We're gonna have astronauts, uh, both current and former astronauts and experts as well, that will review all the applications and select the 26 uh, junior astronauts. In, in the, the selection will take place from students that are in grade six, seven, and eight, so in middle school. As I mentioned, if you're not in, the, in that category, you can still participate on all the online activities as well, but that program is launched. So if you're in grade six, seven, or eight, please go online, get, fill out that questionnaire, get your video ready, get your reference letter ready, because we've got astronauts who are excited to look at uh, your application. Next question, Kate, where's Kate? Right over here. Okay, straight ahead. I want to be a biomedical engineer for NASA when I grow up. Um, what would you do, like if you were a biomedical engineer? Well, first of all, we're not gonna let you go to NASA. You're gonna have to work for the Canadian Space Agency. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then uh, but ultimately, you will end up working with NASA because we're part of an enormous partnership the biggest successes of the space program is that we learn to work with people from around the globe. We work very closely with NASA. They are great partners. In fact, they're the ones who set this initial goal and said, we want to build this lunar gateway by the moon. And they said, Canada, will you join us? And that's how much faith and trust they have in Canada to deliver on this project, because it's a big deal. We've never built that kind of robotics before that are going to be needed out there with artificial intelligence in it. It's really, really neat, and we're gonna have some cool engineers working on it. But I'm glad you asked about biomedical engineer, because if we're gonna send astronauts out to the moon, do you think medical is gonna be important out there? Of course it is. How are we gonna help our astronauts when they're so far away from home if we have medical issues? And how are we gonna enable more and more humans um, to travel in space and tackle those issues that we face medically? And we also, interestingly enough, this is one of the reasons that really resonates with our strategy, it's hot, it's, there's a big focus on it in our strategy, is the medical aspects of space. Because you know, I lived in Cold Lake, Alberta, for seven years. My wife is a physician. And Cold Lake's three and a half hours, four hours from Edmonton if you need some of those medical facilities. And of course we know if you go even further north in Canada, there are people that are much, much further away from medical facilities. So we recognize that we have challenges here on the planet they're the exact same challenges we have in space. And that's why this is going to be a focus for Canada going into the future. We've set a goal that we're going to make ourselves leaders of leveraging technology and integrating new technologies to help us improve the lives of Canadians here on the planet first and taking that expertise and that experience to space with our international partnerships. So we'll be looking for you. Make sure you give me a high five on the way up and uh, so I know your name. Because we invested so much in the Canadian space program, like you said, you're staying here. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more question. We, yeah, Sam, right over here. There we go, to the left. What are you mostly looking forward to experience in space? Um, I, well, I talked about the view. It's probably the thing I am looking forward to the most. But uh, the other thing that I'm very, very passionate about, and I hope this resonates with you as young Canadians, I love challenge. I love setting a problem, tackling that problem as a goal, surrounding myself with other people, coming together to find a solution, and that is very, very rewarding. And that is what we do in space. It's why our government has decided we need to invest in space to leverage the inspiration of space, because we set goals so big that we don't just bring a country together, we bring the world together to do some of the most incredible things that humanity has ever done. And I think we're just getting started. It's exciting, this investment under the space uh, strategy, particularly for the Lunar Gateway, as Jeremy was talking about, it's for 24 years. So this complements the investments we made in the International Space Station, 
But this sets us up for long-term success, and so we're really looking forward to the journey and going to do uh, in the near future. Okay, the look off, off stage will be good for time, or do we ask a few more questions? Okay, <laughs> there we go. That's the right spirit. More questions? I think I saw Kate. Okay, do you have a question? Yeah, so there, there are never any guarantees in life. Like I told you, I've been doing this for a while, and while I will most likely go to space, you never know what happens. I could have a medical issue that would preclude me from going to space, for example. But I'll tell you this, every astronaut that we've ever hired, um, we, we have endeavored, we've done everything we can to send them to space. Because once we pull them out of their career streams and they, they invest themselves and we invest all that money in them to train them to go to space, we absolutely want them to do the job. And so while it doesn't always work out, it's usually medical that stops us, um, we pretty much fly every astronaut we select in space. So if, you, if we select you, we're gonna do our, our very, very best to get you in space. I think I see a question over here on the right. Yes, we've got one right here. Why was the first rover that was made? First rover that was made? Rover. Rover. What was the first one? Was it Pathfinder? I don't know the first one. Right, what was the first rover? Even astronauts can get stuck. Frank, will know. It's not the first time I haven't known. It's what the internet's for. Russians sent one to the moon. So there you go, there's one. One was sent to the moon. And we've been, you know, when we, we use this word robots too, you gotta think about it. every satellite we send to space is really a robot. It goes up there and it has a job to do. It may not have wheels or arms, but every satellite we send to space is a robot. And one that particularly resonates with me is Voyager. You guys heard of Voyager? You know, the Voyager satellites have actually left our solar system. They've been flying for so long they've actually exited our solar system, how we define it. I think that is really, really cool. And uh, that's the very best we've been able to do in the history of space. And that's just a tiny part of space. That's only our solar system. That's the area around our sun. Of course, our sun is one star in what, which galaxy? The Milky Way, I heard it over there. One star in the galaxy. And we think there's a couple of billions, hundred, a couple hundred billion stars in our galaxy. And I love telling this story because when I started, when I first started this job, our calculation of how many galaxies are out there was about one or two hundred billion galaxies, plus or minus. And now we believe that that number was really, really low, and we're well over a billion, um, or a trillion galaxies, so well over a trillion galaxies now in our universe. So there's just so much we don't know. And the very best we've been able to do is get a robot, or our satellite to the edge of our solar system. There's so much left to explore. A lot of space out there. <laughs> Sam has a youngster over here. What would you die from first? Freezing to death in space or the lack of oxygen? <laughs> you can answer. What do you think? <laughs> I think he doesn't want to go there. <laughs> I don't actually know 100% what would kill you. So let's say I was in space right now. Let's, how about we do it this way? Let's say you were in space right now. <laughs> and you're in your spacesuit, and you got a big hole, and the air started to leak out. We would start to lose pressure. And actually, you know, we talk about your blood boiling, but the gas in your blood eventually, it's like your blood, blood would be boiling. It wouldn't feel hot, but it would be like the blood is evaporating out of your body. And uh, I don't know what that would be like. Hopefully we never, never, ever find out. <laughs> okay, Kate, you're gonna wrap this up with the last question here. When is the next Mars rover going to be built? Oh, well, um, there's one being built right now, actually. And uh, one of the goals that we have is to bring a sample back from Mars. And so we're hoping that that'll be able to happen in the next, in the next decade anyway, that we'll be able to bring a sample back from Mars. Is that something you'd like to work on? Would you like to work over is going to Mars? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs>
as we've seen today, there's a lot of options. You know, there's going to be a lot of different skills, a lot of different expertise for the Open Space team. I want to thank the kids here today for the great questions. Give it up for the kids. For the